Good morning. Good morning. We started today our service with trumpet call. Yes. You probably know that we are in a season of trumpet call. Very special season. And how Jewish people call it Rosh Hashanah. But that's not biblical. Rosh Hashanah means the head, the head of the year. But that's not biblical. Biblical name of this season is trumpet. Time of trumpets or season of trumpets. And it is called to our souls. I want to bring to your attention verses from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter, chapter 24, starting with verse 31. The great trumpet will sound, and he will send out his angels to the four corners of the earth, and they will gather his chosen people, you, from one end of the world to the other. And then in verse 32, very interesting, I did not think about that when I cho chose the topic about the trees, but trees are involved, trees, they are involved into this trumpet season, or season of trumpet call. Let the fig tree teach you a lesson. When its branches become green and tender, and it starts putting out leaves, you know that summer is near. So trees are giving to us to identify seasons, including season what we have now. In the same way, when you see all these things, you will know that the time is near. Remember that all these things will happen before the people now living have all died. So it is a season of revival. It is a season of coming back to life in eternity with our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a time of great joy, it is a time of great hope, and we are people of hope. And there are so many people even around this building who are hopeless. We have them almost every day in, the, in this room. They are coming for food, but they need also to have hope, and hope is grounded and rooted in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are people of hope. We are people of great blessings which you bestowed upon us, your children. And Father, I pray that in the midst of our seasons of life, we acknowledge this special time, time when you call up our souls to be fully dedicated and committed to your lead, to your guide, to your plan in our lives, Father. And in this town and every other place around the globe, there are so many people who lost any guidance in their lives. Even they get education, but they still do not know the meaning of their lives. They do not know why did they come to this world. So, Father, use us. Use us, give to us those chances to direct people, to help them to be grounded in your love, in your hope, in your forgiveness, and in your salvation. We dedicate this service to you. We glorify your holy name, and we will be open to your presence, to your lead. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, I'm just going to invite our singers to come up and... Um... I see there's some people here that I haven't met before, but uh, hope to be able to fellowship afterwards, and uh, good to see you all. And I just feel it on my heart to introduce the music team, and uh, I would say uh, Brad is part of the music team because he does the words. He's at the back uh, on the PowerPoint, and uh, Mark is playing guitar. That's my wife, Monia. My son Justin, and there's Marge, and there's Charlotte, and Marina, our singers, and I'm Colin. And it's good to be here with you all. Uh, may the love of Jesus just surround every one of you. Uh, we're gonna, if you if you feel to stand, this is a stand-up song. Uh, but you don't have to if you're not able to. So we totally get that. And we need to be free. It says in the Bible that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And uh, now sometimes people mistake liberty for anarchy. 
you know, anarchy is when you think you can do whatever you want, but the Holy Spirit gives us the freedom to do what God wants us to do. And because the Holy Spirit is always in union with the Father God. And, uh, and he gives us that freedom to love one another. All right. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb?
this next song that we're going to sing is an invitation of intimacy with our, our beautiful God. And it's called Commune with Me. And if there's anybody that uh, feels that you need prayer during this time or you just want to come for even a meal, it's totally up to you. But if you're up here during this time and someone will notice and will come and pray for you. Thank you. 
worship you in spirit and in truth. Worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be worshipped and adored. Our God. Thank you, Lord, for all the things that you have done for us. Hallelujah. My child, listen to me, and I will speak to you. My child, open your heart, and I will feel it with my love. Father God, we come to you, lift up before you our brothers and sisters. You know their lives, you know their mistakes, shortages, confusion, doubts, and struggles. We lift up before you, Dorothy. We bring to you Luke. We ask you about Major Bob. We pray for Cyril, for Natalie. Even now, touch them with your heart. Even now, bring to them your healing, your wellness. We ask your righteousness upon them. Let them break the barrier of logic, of logical expectations. Let them step to the new ground of holiness. Let them come out to the stretched plain fields of new beginnings. Forgive us for our pride. Forgive us for our egocentric views on our lives. Forgive us for stubbornness, for blindness, for short-sightedness. When we make decisions, we do forget your words of wisdom. And we follow our traditions of man, the order of things established on this earth by people who are blind, who don't know who you are. Please be merciful to us. Remove all traces from the past. Remove all barriers, all curses. May 
any dark spots from our souls and minds will be wiped completely by your loving, merciful arm, Father God. Father, we pray for Mark. We pray for complete recovery in Jesus' name. Let him get full strength and worship you as he can, as he has been trained in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for Gail. She's a thoughtful, caring Sister, I pray about your forgiveness and complete recovery. Father, let her spine to be strong and straightened. She does not need to go to any other country to get doctor's help because you are our mighty and great physician. Father, we lift up before you, Gloria. She has been a nurse, but she's still a nurse in her heart, in her mind. <laughs> she takes care of other people. Father, I lift up her before you. Please take care of her and her family in Jesus' name. And bring back this raven, Father. Bring back this bird of prey. May this bird of prey will become a bird of companionship and support because only you can do that father we also lift up before you our young people even from my list father god i see drugs 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 i see this addiction i see this slavery and i pray that you will forgive i know that i remember myself how stubborn i was how prideful i was but I pray about your mercy. Give them the chance now to become your messengers, your ambassadors among young people. Young people, young generation in this country, in many other countries, they suffering because of that addiction. And those drugs, you know, Father God, they get more and more cheap, more and more available to almost everyone. And more and more, it's getting hard to get rid of those drugs, Father. And us, sons of men, we're becoming very sophisticatedly deceitful in helping Satan to get into addiction, those young people, Father God. I pray about dealers in Jesus' name, that they will meet you, Jesus, and dealers will become proclaimers of the good news. And every client, when he will come to those dealers, he will hear, repent and follow the Lord Jesus Christ and be forgiven, be healed. I lift up before you Elena, John, Thomas, Derek, Emma, and Ariel. I lift up before you Craig, Tina, and Ryan. <clears throat> I lift up before you Ravija and Ravisha and Varuna, Father God. I pray about home for them, yes. comfortable, loving yes. home in Jesus' name. Jesus. Also, I lift up before you Leah, Father God. And Father, I pray about this lady by the name Carol. She is a servant. She is a servant, but she has been hurt by herself during her service. Father, I pray, pray about complete recovery, physical and even more emotional recovery in Jesus' name. And speaking about emotions, Father God, please give us wisdom. Do not allow those destructive emotions to come and damage our brain our circle of life may our circle of life would not be damaged by those destructive emotions in jesus name please give us wisdom how to be slow in expressing every emotion in jesus name amen Church and uh, we 
can see a few years this morning. So welcome. We hope you will feel comfortable and you will get something from our fellowship. After the church service, we have a, a potluck. Potluck? Yes. And uh, I will remind you quickly about church programs during the coming week. On the 7th of October, on Monday, we are resuming the prayer meeting in the office at 9.15 in the morning. Please come and join us. On Tuesday, our address of the office is 180 MacArthur Street, and you will see directions to the Salvation Army on the second floor. On Tuesday, we have a Bible study at 10 in the morning, Armor of God, with Tom and Carol Hutchinson. Please join, feel free to join us in the chapel. On Thursday, we are having Bible study, women's Bible study, 10 a.m. again in the chapel. If you have time, please join us. And uh, next slide, please. After the church service, we are serving potluck today. Please stay longer and enjoy the delicious food our members prepared for everyone today. Next slide, please. On the, for Sunday church services, we still continue to record music talents for the fourth and fifth Sunday of each month. And also we need greeters and meters to be in, in front of the church for the fourth and fifth Sunday. You can come at 10.40 and start greeting people. So if you feel you have a capacity to serve, as a greeter and meter, please come and see me after the church service. Next slide, please. Donations of non-perishable food for Thanksgiving to our food bank. Today we have a, like some of the donations which are already brought to the food bank for our oh, sorry, by our church members. Please feel free to continue. If you wish to donate during the week, you can go between 9 and 11. 30 to our food bank area and drop a bucket of uh, non-perishable food or you can bring it next Sunday to the church and we will deliver it to the food bank. If you wish to donate, to give monetary donation, you can use envelope at the back table, sign your name, put your address and the tax receipt will be provided for you and leave it right there. Next slide, please. We have open paid position for our ministry unit. For those who don't know, we operate soup kitchen with about 15,000 meals per year. We operate huge food bank which serves about 7,000 hunters per year. And uh, we have three, two thrift stores in Parksville and Wollacombe <coughs> Beach. So for those locations, we need people to fill in the position. If you know someone, for part-time food bank swamper driver, position is open until March 31st, 2025. If you wish to apply, submit the resume online or bring it to me. And for casual position, soup kitchen, assistant supervisor, it's actually not casual, but part-time. 16 to 20 hours per week. And for part-time family services, pathway of hope, case worker, we are looking individuals to fill in these positions. So that's everything I think, right? Yeah, thank you so much. And I'm inviting Major Sergei for this sermon. We continue our series, the three concept in the Bible. The three concept in the Bible. Three, one of the most popular words in the Bible. They mentioned more, I, I believe almost 2,000 times it was mentioned in the Bible, maybe even more than that. But what I'm trying to explore, how much we are connected with the tree, with the imagery of a tree, in some way, we know that we are actually created in the a, in a same principle which trees are created. There are many similarities. So today we have part two, 
the tree concept in the Bible. First of all, I wanted to bring to you next slide, please. I wanted to, again, to bring to you a definition of the tree. I know what tree is. I know that you know what tree is. We live in a such beautiful area. We have so many trees. And when we talk about trees, you know that tree, trees have some kind of communal existence or living. When you will go to the cathedral grove, you will see those trees. They exist for hundreds and hundreds of years together. And they actually support each other, especially those trees by the perimeter. They, they have kind of protective, play kind of protective role for the rest who are in the middle. So tree is a woody perennial plant having a single, usually elongate main stem. We also have the main stem, generally with few or no branches on its lower part. Speaking about branches, yesterday I, I drew tree for myself to understand of who I am. And on those branches I discovered some things which I should get rid of my life. Because on those branches we have good things, but also we have birds of prey. We have sometimes visitations of entities who hide themselves in the midst of those branches. And we have to be very attentive, we have to analyze ourselves, our behavior, our reactions, our emotions, in order to understand what moves us towards certain emotions or towards certain reactions. And when we explore that attentively, sometimes we can find something which comes from the past and we have to deal with it. God gave to us power and authority and wisdom and this organ brain to be transformed by the renewal of our mind. Amen? Next line. Something in the form of a resembling or resembling a tree, such as much branched system of channels, especially in an animal body or in human body, we have those channels. And we will see that even scripture tells to us that we have to be like a tree which is planted by the water in order for our channels to be properly directed. And last line, a piece of wood, such as a post or pole, usually adapted to a particular use or forming part of a structure or implement. And we know that the pole of shame, which Romans used in the history, our Savior, Jesus Christ, has been nailed to that pole of shame, and he took all my shame, your shame, my guilt, your guilt, my sinful nature, and your sinful nature, and nailed that to the pole, which was pole of crucifixion, or shameful pole. So he became a shame for us on our behalf, with the usage of the tree. And by the way, we also know from the scripture that those people who die being hanged on a tree, they are cursed. So same way Jesus died being hanged on the tree, he took curses upon himself, according to the scripture, according to the Torah. Next slide, please. Next slide, just a little bit switch our mind toward humorous part. It is helpful sometimes to, to, to <laughs> bring back humor, not to be too serious all the time. And also, it's not only for laugh, it's also for cry. Why are pine trees bad at suing? They always drop their needles. Uh, second one. He killed him with an axe, dragged the corpse home, and festively, festively decorated it at his, in his living room. And last one. I shook my family tree, and a bunch of nuts <laughs> fell out. <laughs> And you might laugh about it, but we, God, has called us to explore our family tree. I am not talking that we should drop uh, our ancestors, but we should be attentive to what our ancestors have done. Because sometimes we do reap, I don't know what theology do you have, some theologians teach that everything is gone. In my life, I know in my life, I, I'm not talking about theology. From experience of my own life and from experience of, of the life of my mother, my father and my uncles, I know that consequences do come to our lives. Yeah. And God gave to us, again, wisdom, knowledge, power and authority to deal with those consequences. Do not leave them hanging on those branches of our family tree. Amen? Amen. 
Next slide, please. Next slide. We coming now to a little bit more understanding how we are created. Maybe you know that better than me. First of all, water dependence. Both humans and trees are composed mostly of water and rely on it for survival. Humans are composed of a significant amount of water. On average, about 60% of the human adult body is water. This percentage can vary based on factors like age, sex and body composition. For instance, babies have higher percentage of water, around 78%, which decreases to about 60 by one a year of age. Different parts of the body have varying water content. Brain and heart, 73% of water. Lungs, 83% of water. Muscles and kidneys, 79. Skin, 64. And bones, 31% of water. And Bible promises to us that joy of the Lord, for example, brings strength to our bone system. And also Word of the Lord promises that we can have juicy bones, alive bones, if we trust to the Lord, if we follow Him, if we attentive to His directions and to His instructions. Water is essential for numerous bodily functions, including temperature, regulation, cellular function, and waste removal. What does water do for you? I took that from the government, U.S. government side. What does water do for us? Needed by the brain to manufacture hormones and neurotransmitters. Also, water forms saliva digestion, keeps mucosal membranes moist, moist, allows body cells to grow, reproduce, and survive. Flushes body waste mainly in urine. Lubricates joints. Water is a major component of most body parts. Also, water regulates body temperature, sweating, and respiration. By the way, when you use a respi respiration, artificial respiration, remember that God did not create you and me for usage of artificial respiration. Tools, remember that. Naturally, we are created to get rid of or to regulate temperature. Converts food to components needed for survival, digestion. Helps deliver oxygen all over the body. You see how important water for us is. So do not forget to consume enough, to drink enough of water and be grateful to God. Next slide, please. Next slide, we again speak about water dependence, but already in the spiritual realm or changing glasses now, getting spiritual glasses. Both humans and trees are composed mostly of water and rely on it for survival. Famous verses from the book of Jeremiah about us being blessed. Do you want to be blessed? I want to be blessed. Who wants to be blessed? I want to be blessed, the Lord God. <laughs> I want every area of my life to be blessed. So, Lord speaks to us through his servant Jeremiah. Blessed is the man. It says man, but it means man and a woman, because we, spiritually, we all are men. Blessed is the man that what? Trusteth. Trust goes first. So, in order to receive God's blessings, what we shall do first, number one, trust to the Lord. Trust to the Lord does not mean that we will understand everything what the Lord says to us to do. No. Sometimes he says something to us. We, we have to do it. Not because we understood that, but because we trust him. Like a child. Sometimes parents tell children to do something and they do not expect that children will understand everything what parents are talking about. Right? So trust is in the Lord. And then number two, what? whose hope the Lord is. So the Lord himself is my and your hope. And scripture also says to us that hope is an anchor of my and your soul. So what does it mean when you're boating? Without anchor you are done. You will be tossed by the waves and you will never stop and never will even when you see the right destination, you still would not reach it because wind might be, you know, against your move. 
So anchor helps to us to be navigating and find when we found our location, we can reach it and stay at this location. Do not be dragged away by the winds. And then God compares us with a tree. He, this blessed man, blessed man, is like a tree planted. Can tree plant itself? Who plants the tree? The gardener, bless you. So who places, who places the tree at the waters? The Lord. He places me at the waters, not I myself. Some religious people think that they can place themselves at the waters. No. That's wrong. That's called self-righteousness. Or self-deception. God, only God can plant me and you at the waters. What waters? Not only physical waters, but waters of salvation. Even in original language, in Hebrew, you cannot say water in a singular form. It is not possible. When you say mayim, you say that there are waters beneath and waters above. Above firmament, firmament and beneath firmament. So God plants us not only close to the waters beneath, to the physical waters, but also to the waters from above. Because our soul needs those waters from above. It's not enough for us to be watered enough. 73% in my body does not mean that I am in a good standing. No. I may be dried in my soul, thirsty in my soul. So I need waters from above to get not 73%, but 100% of water from above to be saved and to be safe. So, he is like a tree planted by water. That's not enough. Then, then God expects from me and from you, stage number two, my involvement. When I plant it at the water, I am responsible for where do I place my roots. When, you, when I get knowledge from the Bible, God expects from me that I will direct my roots in the right direction. Because if I will be rooted in the traditions, religious traditions of man, I will come to the thirst. Drought, drought, season of drought will come to me because God does not like when people directed only by religion. He wants for people to be directed by his spirit. God creates every morning. He creates a new, new beginning. Even today's season, season of trumpets, reminds to us that God gives to us opportunity to examine where did we place our roots. So, as a tree, I have to send out my roots by the stream. In Bible perspective, waters which are still are not alive. Only stream of waters is, a, is, a, is calling uh, living waters. Only streaming waters are living. Waters, for example, pond is not a living waters. But the river is, brook is. That is why it says, send out its roots by the stream. Do not keep your roots at the pond of Yesterday, let your roots to be directed by the stream. That's what brings life to me and to you. Do not live in yesterday, in the traditions of yesterday, because God is alive. And also, that tree does not fear when heat comes. So when I do not direct my roots by the stream, I will be enslaved by the fear. If I do direct my roots by the stream, I would not be enslaved by the fear. Fear is one of the most powerful beings created by God. One of the most powerful beings, entity, demonic general, spirit of fear. He tests everyone, starting with me. Everyone here is tested by this spirit. So if we do, we do not direct our roots by the stream, then he will take control over us in one way or another way.
and then comes worries all the time. And what worries do? They kill us, worries, constant worries. They decrease our immune system. And when our immune system goes down, we are becoming vulnerable for any diseases. Very easy. I'm not a scientist, but it is very easy to understand. So it's better to be navigated by the stream of living waters. And also, when our roots are directed by the stream, our leaves remain green, which means our skin without mascara will be fresh. And when you come to the mirror in the morning, you would not be so upset and angry because your skin gets dry. And that's not enough. And the tree which sends the roots by the stream would not be anxious in the year of drought. So God tests us with what? With fear. And also he tests us with drought. But we would not be anxious. Why? For it does not cease to bear fruit we not only will be protected from fear and, and anxiety, but also we will be fruitful. When we are fruitful, we are helpful to other people, but do not forget about ourselves. First recipients of my fruit should be me. Because if I would not be fed properly, I will dry up and die and would not be any way helpful to other people. Take care of yourself because you are very important and many people depend on you. If you are tree planted by the water and your roots are sent by the stream, then you are very important because many people depend on you. Now, just want to understand a little bit for you, bring understanding to you this very important verb sends out sends out jesus used the same uh, verb shalach in hebrew shalach means let go let go or send out it speaks about apostles apostles god actually sent you and me for different kind of ministries for be, if you're evangelist so god sends to you to people he actually sends every one of us to people but some of us more skillful in that area some of, of us less skillful it speaks about people of Yahuwah, Lord's people, God's people in the Bible, who constantly being sent out by the Lord. And so if we are Lord's sent ones, then we have to understand what we are sent for. Which means, that means that why do we exist here? We exist here not only for getting pleasure or, or implementing our egocentric plan, wills and plans, but also we exist here to serve him. In the Gospel of Matthew, I already will be told you, it's Aramaic translation from Aramaic language. And you know that Aramaic was folk language during Jesus' time. Everybody spoke Aramaic at Jesus' time. In Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19, Therefore, said Jesus, after he declared that all power is given to him, he said, Therefore, go, Go means I send, send you. Go, disciple all the nations. What does it mean, disciple? Disciple means help them to resemble who Lord God is, who Jesus Christ is. Disciples all, all the nations. And baptize. It is not enough. It is not enough. Bring for me teaching here for you. I am also responsible for helping you to be baptized to dive in, to dive into reality, to dive into the, what? Into the water and into the stream. Water and into the stream. Into the water, that's not my responsibility. God will plant it already you at the water. He planted you at the water. Do you remember I told you that's not your responsibility, that's his responsibility. But your responsibility is to direct your roots, your foundation, to sit of your emotions. You know, there is expression, sit of emotions, sit of intellect, sit of your memory. That's where you are responsible. 
to direct that, to remove something and to add something, which means that you root yourself according to the stream of the living waters. And I speak to you right now. I, when I quote to you scripture, I do literally outpour living waters of the scripture onto your ears. And then it goes to your brain, and then it goes to your discernment and intellect and perceptions and interests and memories and works with it. And baptize them. Baptize to where? In the name. The name of the Lord is here. For example, Yahuwah Rapha, the Lord Healer, is right here. Last week we sang, do you remember this song? Where I like this song. Even during all this night I sang this song while sleeping. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Do you remember? Very easy. His grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. So I just, inside of me, this song was keep running. Baptize them in the name of the Father. And who is the Father? I can tell you. His name is Holy One of Israel. Each, if, if he would ever will get passport, Canadian passport, for example, and you will look into that passport, you will see that his name is the Holy One of Israel. Of Israel. That's, that's what the name of the Father. And the Son, Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of Holiness. Do you see how Aramaic language brings to us right name of God? He is the Spirit of Holiness. He's a Holy One Himself with His breath. Spirit. In Hebrew means breath, breath. So he comes so close to you that he breathes at your ears right now by himself, by his word. Next slide, please. Next slide comes to us also about someone being sent. In this regard, it is message from Joseph in Egypt when he met his brothers. And his brothers felt that they were guilty of selling him to the slavery in Egypt. And they did not know what to do with that when, when this guilt was exposed. And Joseph said to them, and in that regard, he spoke on behalf of Jesus Christ also, because he was prototype of Christ. He spoke to his bro brothers, to the chosen ones. Now, do not be grieved or angry with yourself. So when God exposes your guilt, your sins, your wickedness, what, what Jesus Christ tells to you right now, do not be grieved and do not be angry with yourself. Why? Because Jesus has been sold into Egypt, Egypt, into slavery. He became slave of everyone, servant of everyone. And Joseph said, because you, brothers, my brothers, sold me here to Egypt, for God sent me Shelachani, Hebrew word. Shelachani, Hebrew verb. Shelachani. He sent me before you to preserve life. So when you get angry with yourself, when you grieve with yourself, remember that Jesus has been sent to die for you. He loves you so much. He did not come to accuse you put you down, knock you down. He came down, katabaino, Greek word katabaino, came down, became one of us because he loves us. He wants for us to be joyful, to be open for his salvation, to be open for his truth. By the way, it's taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 45, verses 4 through 8, where Joseph spoke with brothers. It was totally different Joseph, absolutely different. When he was young, he was very prideful, arrogant. He was man of promises, but he was stupid enough to brag about his mission, to brag about his visions, and cause great sense of jealousy among his brothers. So sometimes when we come and we, we are anointed, 
we are called by God, but we perform in order to make ourselves important, God abhors that. Because that intrigues, causes jealousy in people around us. We have to be very wise. How do we deliver the message? And when we deliver the message? When? The factor of time is very important. When God gave this information, this revelation to Joseph, it did, he does, did not mean that Joseph should spread that around every member of his family immediately. God sent people out to complete his plans, and sometimes that mean, meant great hardship. But Yahuwah's plans in the long run would lead to reward, even when it's difficult now. It does not, mean that, does not mean that we should lose our heart. We shall be courageous because great reward is waiting. Amen? Next slide, please. Next slide, we continue. We continue uh, water dependence, us humans and trees, similarity that we are composed mostly of water and rely on it for survival. Psalm 1, my, one of my favorite psalms, by the way, Psalm 1 is absolutely perfect teaching. Absolutely perfect teaching in the Bible given to humans. So if anyone wants to learn how to teach, they have to swallow, digest this Psalm 100 times. Psalm number 1, verses 1 through 3. Again, it starts with word. What? Blessed. You can look in the dictionary, it's very rich, very rich. Baruch, Hebrew word Baruch, or Greek name Boris. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the what? Wicked. And by the way, we are all broke this command, starting with me, me and you. We all failed in that command. Why? Because wherever we go, we come to the counsel of the wicked. Wherever we are. And number two, blessed is the man who not nor stands in the way of sinners. So, counsel and the way. And number three, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, scoffers or mockers. But his delight, do you see even combination, technical composition of those verses show to us that if we do walk in the counsel of the wicked, if we stand in the way of sinners, if we sit in the seat of scoffers, there is no joy of the Lord in us. But if we do not do what God said to us, don't do, then we will get the joy of the Lord or delight. And where would we get this delight? In His Word. So if Word of the Lord is boring, I'm not accusing you, I'm telling to you something very sincerely. If Word of the Lord is boring for you, it means that you stuck in the counsel of the wicked, the way of sinners, and the seat of scoffers. You stuck there. You should move. Because if you will move from those roots, then you will find delight and joy in the word of the Lord. And that's not enough. Also, on his instructions and directions, he meditates day and night. You probably have heard this lie from Satan in churches where you've heard that Jesus came to abolish the instructions and directions of the Lord. Have you heard that? That Jesus abolished the law. If you have heard that, you've heard the voice of Satan. God gave to us his instructions and directions because he loves us and he wants for us to have his joy. And the only way how to get his joy is to be directed and navigated by him, by his word. So whole Bible, Jesus never came. He, Jesus said twice, he said, I did not come to abolish, but people still teach in churches that he did abolish the law. So, and then comparison comes again with the tree. This man, 
is like a tree. But it's a little bit different. See how differently it's placed here. Planted by streams of water. Streams of water. And those streams of water it can be translated as channels. What those channels do? Those channels divide and those channels connect you. If you properly place your roots, if you properly create your seat of emotions, appetites, seat of intellect, then you will be divided in something and, and split in something, which, which is necessary for you and acceptable to God. That's what means channel. And as that tree planted by the streams of water, you will yield its fruit, your fruit, in, in, in the right season. And your leaf does not wither. So your skin will be moisturized. Your, your hands and your skin will be moisturized. Women, I'm talking, you will be young. Eternally. And you would not use mascara. Or, or another word, Avon. And you would not use Avon. Who uses Avon? Is somebody here who uses Avon? Do you know what Avon is? Uh, you know, but somebody doesn't know here. I want, I want to tell you. Avon from Hebrew translates as one of the most darkest, ugly level of iniquity and wickedness. That's, do you think this company accidentally took this name? No. <laughs> Nothing happens accidentally in this world. So you do not need this ma masquerade because God provides proper nourishment for your skin, for your bones, for your body. But you have to be wise where do you place your roots, your channels. <laughs> By the way, leaf. And its leaf does not wither. From Hebrew, leaf means to excel. To excel, to come up before God. So when you when when God calls you leafy, it means that you are. You know why God cursed this fig tree? Do you know why? Because it totally contradicted to the meaning of being leafy. This tree was leafy but fruitless. It was not guilt of the tree. Some people, some scholars are struggling with that. They are saying, why Jesus cursed the tree if it was not the season? <laughs> yes, it was not the season, but Jesus is creator. He used this tree as an object lesson or subject lesson for his disciples. What he wanted to tell them, it is a play of the words. In Hebrew, leafy means that you come up before God and you becoming fruitful in that regard. But Jesus himself was hungry. He came to eat and, and the tree was leafy, but no fruits. And last one, message of prosperity. Do you hear me? Message of prosperity here in Psalm 1. In all, in all, in Canada all, in US all, and in Africa. All means all. In all that he does, he prospers. One of the first books written by humans, Book of Job, it was written even before Book of uh, Genesis. Chapter 38, verse 25 says, Who has divided a water course for the overflowing of waters? Who has divided? Who has placed those channels? Remember we talked that channels means to divide and to split and to add also. Who has divided the water course for the overflowing of waters or a way for the lightning of thunder? So what, what this message is about? This message is about blessings and curses, abundance and provision and killing factor. That's what it is about. And what Job says, who? Who is that? Only the Lord God has divided a water course for the overflowing of water. Jesus came to give to us a life of abundance, overflowing waters of supplication or, or salvation or life of abundance. But also Jesus came to bring judgment on those who will reject him. 
and this earth will be judged by the fire. It was already, this earth already was judged by the water, now time came to be judged by the fire. Everyone will be tested by the fire, no one will escape. I know there's a church, church theology that about rapture. I like that, you know, humanly speaking, I like that. I like to be taken away and do not suffer. Who doesn't like? Everyone likes to do not suffer, right? Only crazy people like suffering. <laughs> but scripture does not teach us that we will be taken away. Scripture teaches that we will be tested by the fire. And the rapture, we have to understand what rapture is. When we were stationed in Nanaimo, I've talked with I've talked about that about on one of Bible studies and one lady next week she brought to me that compilation of papers from articles, from magazines, from online printed, brought to me. You have to study it. I said, I do study the scripture. What scripture says, I do not need articles from magazines. I need only one resource, which is the Bible itself. And Bible says, yes, we will be taking to the air for what? Do you remember for what we will be taking to the air rapture? For what? To meet Jesus Christ, who is landing. I'm saying to those who want to live on heaven, I'm saying you chose the wrong airline. <laughs> Jesus airline is landing, not coming up. So if you're coming, if you're choosing uh, airline which goes up, you chose the wrong line airline because his airline is landing. So we will be taken to the air to meet him, jump into his plane and to land. Where? Temple Mount area, Jerusalem. People asking me, it's not enough space for everyone. It is enough. There is a difference between physical Israel today, which is politically made by humans, not by God, and biblically made Israel, which will be much more bigger, up to Iraq, borders of Iraq, and up to the borders of Egypt, including some Arabic nations. Because his Israel is not political formation. His Israel, it is a house for every nation under heaven. Amen. Next slide, please. How God, uh, it's second from the end, don't worry, we're almost done. <laughs> how God sees the man. How God sees the man. This is picture about how God sees you and me. It was taken from book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 2. But I will add verse number 1 also, because it speaks about royal Or, or time of royalty, acknowledged, recognized royalty of Jesus Christ. That's what this historical period is about. Verse 1, see, says Isaiah, see, a king will reign in righteousness and rulers will rule with justice. Only when Jesus will be the king who will come and sit at the throne, only then rulers will rule with justice. You know, when I pronounce those words, Facebook is watching me. Every time when I pronounce word justice, Facebook, computer, <laughs> take a note of it. So that is why I cannot directly place on Facebook anything, because I very often pronounce word justice. It is dangerous word for this age. But still, Isaiah did not know about us. So he said, see, a king will reign in righteousness and rulers will rule with justice. And then verse 2, each one, each one will be like a shelter from the wind, like a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert. So when you put your roots properly, you yourself, you yourself becoming a stream of water for those who are in drought, in, in thirst. You becoming hands and feet and eyes and ears of Jesus to people who are around you. Because they need that water. That is why, that's what Isaiah says to us. 
Those people will be like streams of water in the desert and the shadow of great rock, shadow of the Almighty by your presence, shadow of the Almighty by your presence will be granted to a thirsty land. People will get this shade from the Almighty, peace in their hearts, only because of your presence, your words, your service to them. That's what Isaiah says. The shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. And if you remember, during our Bible studies, we explored this word, word rock by another. By another, you, or in the Bible, you could, do you remember this word? Selah. When you read Psalms, read, 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 and then Selah. In the Christian theological institutions, they will tell you, Selah means a pause, a moment of solitude. Yes, but that's not enough. That is not enough. This moment is for you and for me, giving between the verses to stand on the rock of salvation. Selah means the rock of salvation. So between verses, Rock of Salvation stretches his hand to you and tells you, take my hand, come here. I will give you proper foundation by the water. I will help you to direct your roots by the streams of water. And then I will send you to people who are suffering in the desert without water and without shade. By the heat of the sun, they are almost killed. By the way, when you speak about the sun, remember in the Bible, heat of the sun represents Egyptian culture. Egyptian culture and culture of any empire represents the heat of the sun because their God is sun God. S-U-N, Horus. Horus is their God. False Messiah, Antichrist. His name is Horus. Our Christ is Jesus. Their Christ is Horus. That is why, that is why this Paul was taken in Egypt and brought to where? Do you remember? Two places. In two places there are Pauls from Egypt. Place number one, Rome. And place number two, I wouldn't tell you, because Facebook will banish me again. <laughs> in the capital, in the capital, do your homework, do your homework, explore where this second pole from Egypt was placed. You will find it. I give you a hint, it is in the capital, close to parliament. Next slide, please. This is the last one. We just repeat again what we learned from Psalm number one. He, the man, is like a tree planted by streams of water, yielding its fruit in season. Yielding, you know, yielding, I like this word, yielding its fruit. You have every one of us fruitful in some ways. But are we ready to yield, to share this fruit? Some people brought those boxes and cans. They, they share it with us, with us, fruits of their labor. It's also very interesting that season of trumpets sometimes comes very close to the season of harvest, right? Everyone celebrates season of harvest, but people forget that trumpet call calls us up to awareness that we have to share the fruits of our labor. So yielding its fruit in season, season, time is important too, whose leaf, skin, skin, bones, hairs, what, sharpness of our eyes, every organ operates, right? Every organ should operate properly. Whose leaf does not wither. What, what, do you remember how it translates? Leaf come up to whom? To God. When you come up to God, you stretch your leaves to God. You stretch your branches, your hands of those branches. And who prospers in all he 
दस सो हु फील्स हु फील्स यू मे नॉट शो यू डू नॉट रेज यू हैंड डू नॉट शो इट टू मी बट प्लीज लिसन इफ यू फील that in some areas of your life you feel thirst maybe even you stepped into the drought season season into the waterless season in your life i do not want to look at you because you will think that i am talking about you <laughs> i'm talking about myself but you you have to listen to if you feel if you understand what i'm talking about if you feel that there is not enough uh, your some of your organs are not watering enough or this balance is in some of your organs or in your maybe memory there is a drought season of drought lack of joy lack of sense of uh, why do you live why did you come to this world maybe you struggling with heavy heavy uh, emotions or pressure depression you know you remember this word depression means double level of pressure double level of pressure but god gave to you double level of grace grace upon grace this double level of walls of demonic fortress stronghold is called stronghold god destroys that by the double level of grace so he destroys first level outer level of the wall by the grace boom and then he destroys the second level because if fighters uh, destroyed uh, the removed first level outer level of walls they come to the inner wall and defenders they put hot i forgot how it is in english fire cold cold no no yes yeah, sometimes coals and also some kind of liquid the black liquid i forgot tar tar, tar yeah tar so they put on the head of those defenders who penetrated the outer level they put on their heads something fiery to kill them but god protects us from it by the second level of grace so double level of pressure he helps us to fight and and to be victorious by the double level of grace and then we come in and we take this stronghold take control over strain stronghold clean the territory So far as I pray that you will give to us wisdom and openness for those of us who struggling with watering of our inner system our body our memory our feelings our emotions please help to us to be open and available to you Father God because you do want to place us at the waters your waters of salvation your waters of nourishment and your waters of joy and you also helps us do not wither every organ every skin i'm praying for those who struggling with that effect with this reaction of withering father please stop it and reverse in jesus name please give understanding to us who are struggling with it for the may we will be prosperous in your eyes by your means by your values may we will be prosperous in Jesus name amen
I would like to conclude today's our special time with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for calling us up back to yourself and to the waters. And may our channels, our roots will be directed properly. I wanted to conclude with the words of blessings from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 3. What amazes me, how many times this word blessed is repeated in one word. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, you and me, in Christ, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, and not only in the heavenly, but on earthly places as well. We live in such beautiful place. Yes. Father God, please bless my brothers and sisters now with Jesus. earthly food, which they graciously prepared and may this time will be a great time of fellowship when we give to each other beautiful smiles, words of encouragement and support in Jesus' name. Be blessed. We have food prepared by us. So please enjoy it. Thank you for coming.